All right, so all everybody's talking about is this uh, this power play, like one for a billion, whatever it is, uh, one for 28, 29, whatever it is in their last, I guess, 28, 29, 30 chances. Uh, what's going on there? I, I don't think we should be alarmed, right? None of these guys have fallen off. It's just, I don't know what, being a little sloppy? What's going on? Well, they changed the power play breakout a couple years ago, and I think what's going on right now is they do this thing called the slingshot or the hinge where, you know, John Carlson skates up the ice and he throws it back behind him to Baxter and his nets off. But the problem with it is everyone's onto it right now, and they're doing it way too slow. Uh, they had some success Friday night. They didn't win the game, but they got after the first minute of the flight, they started to skate as fast as they could on that and use their speed and the fact that they had one extra player to their advantage. And if they can get that in gear, I think that's the bottom line because it gives you so much more zone time. And then once they get in the zone, they had a lot of great looks the other night in, in uh, actually in Detroit as well and Saturday, Sunday afternoon. But in Dallas on Friday night, they had a ton of great looks. Just really bad ice probably kept them off the board. I think here he needs to be way more decisive, way more firm in everything he does because he believes that the face-offs, you know, for percentages are, are way overblown. And what we've seen with the Caps over the years is, you know, and other teams, they've had these great playoff guys, but they don't win the Stanley Cup with the best center man in the league or, the, you know, the top 10 guys. They're, they're not there. And so it, it's got to be the other guys. There's got to be different ways to win face-offs. But, you know, I think that's just one of those numbers that, that people pick on way too much. You've got to have a plan for a loss. You've got to have a plan for a win to make something out of it. And right now, those numbers are down. There will be players available that are great face-off guys, but a lot of times, you know, the guys that I know that are available, I wouldn't want them on the team. And, you know, there's <laughs> there's maybe one guy out there, but he's priced out of it. And I, I know one year Nashville traded a first-rounder for the best face-off man in the league, and it never worked out for them. I don't think they ever won a round, and it didn't work out. So, you know, I just think that's one of those things that people pick at. And the bottom line is you got to score more goals than the other team, not win more face-offs. Yeah, Cakes. Why are you asking a stupid face-off hey, just, I, I just had to ask. It jumped out at me that they were last in face-off. So I'm, I'm glad Allen is letting everybody know it's an right, let's get stat. to Let's get to the important question. Do you like them tonight against the Flyers? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. The Flyers last night played a tough game against St. Louis. Uh, I watched it. It was painful. Uh, <laughs> they didn't have a with, a... with a little bit of rest, put the screws to them tonight, play the game with a ton of pace attack them. They've got, a, uh, I think, a 20-year-old goaltender in that or whatever he is. He's very young. He just got in the NHL a few weeks ago, and they put everything on his shoulders. But I think they've got to go after him and try to get him yanked. If they put the other guy in, it'll be the seventh goalie they've used this year. Goaltending is a huge issue in Philadelphia, but I think it's a huge issue because of the team is not that strong, and the defensemen, their six defensemen, aren't as good as people think they are. 